Did you know that just about every water softener has a bypass built in? But what is it used for? Where is it? How do you use it? Is it important? As a homeowner, do I need to know what it's used for? Do I need to know what to do with it? Do iron filters have bypasses? Do tannin filters have bypasses? Well, I'm going to explain it all to you starting right now. Whether you're a do-it-yourself homeowner, a plumber, or a water filtration specialist, this video is for you. The bypass is located wherever the plumbing connects up to your water softener, iron filter, or tannin filter. Our Hume water filtration products all feature the Clack WS1 valve, and it has this great, highly intuitive uh, bypass. So it's super simple to operate, and as you can see, it's very well labeled. And by the way, I encourage you to watch this video right to the end. I've got a great tip that's going to ensure that your water softener bypass doesn't leak. It would be easier for you to understand this video if you understood how a water softener works. If you don't, I've got a great video that explains the whole process. I'll put a link in the description down below. You definitely want to check that out. So when would you need to bypass your water softener or other water filtration equipment? Well, there's actually a few different scenarios. The first one, the most common one, is if all the plumbing in your whole household is connected up and is all treated water, and you've got an outside faucet where you would need untreated water, then that's when you would bypass it. So when, when would that happen? Well, it'd be great to have treated water, especially if you've got hard water for washing your car on the outside faucet or for washing windows or, or situations like that. But if you want to have untreated water for filling a swimming pool or filling a hot tub, or maybe you've got a brand new lawn that needs lots of lawn watering, you can bypass that uh, water softener and then use the untreated water and then put, take it back off bypass when you're done. If you're disinfecting a well and you want to run that disinfectant through the household and you put chlorine in your well to d disinfect it, so you don't want to run that chlorine through your water softener. So again, you would bypass that water softener. If something malfunctions on the water softener and it springs a leak, well, you could bypass that water softener and that way you'd still have household water until you can have someone come out and repair the leak on your water softener. And during the installation or troubleshooting of your water softener, you would definitely use that bypass valve. So the bypass valve can be configured four different ways to fulfill four different functions. So the most common one is when it's in service. So if we hold it up here, so what happens is supply water goes in, but treated water comes back out. So arrow in, arrow out. The next way that it can be configured is in bypass mode. So we turn the two arrows so they face each other. So now what happens is supply water comes in, but supply water comes back out. No treated water is coming out of here whatsoever. The third configuration is in diagnostic mode. So if we move it that way, so now what happens is supply water comes in and supply water comes back out again, but no treated water. But there's still water going to the water softener itself. So you can do work to diagnose the system. And you can also, when you first install the water softener, you would use this mode to, uh, to flush out any debris and to get rid of the air out of the water softener and that before you hook it up to the household plumbing. And the last mode is shut off mode where you turn the inlet valve in the bypass position, but you leave the other valve open. So now no water enters and no water exits. So it's a great way to use it if for some reason you want to isolate the water supply after the water softener. By now you probably realize that 99% of the time your bypass valve will always be in the in-service position. But one important tip to keep in mind is that if you leave it that way year after year, it, the, these valves will actually seize up and when it comes time to use them, you'll actually get a leak. So what you need to do to prevent that is once a year you need to exercise that bypass valve by putting it into the bypass position. Taking it back out, putting it back in, and then taking it back out of bypass. And that way, that'll uh, free up the valve and keep it free and running so that you won't run into that leak situation when you do need that bypass. Click up here for your next video on water softeners, and I'll see you there. Any questions or comments, add them down below.